Hello and welcome to the Sunshine Prosthetics Trans Tibial Casting Instructional Video. Today we're going to be going over an easy and straightforward trans tibial casting method that will give you reliable and repeatable results. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and review a little bit of the anatomy that you need to know and be paying attention to throughout the casting process. So the main parts of the anatomy that you're going to be wanting to pay attention to are the interosseous groove located between the fibula and the tibia, the medial tibial flare, the patella tendon, the proximal edge of both the medial and lateral epicondyles, and the insertion points of the hamstring tendons posteriorly. All of these are going to be really important during the casting process, so even before you get started, you need to be palpating your patient's limbs and knowing where each of these are and what they feel like. Another thing that you need to do before you begin the casting process is make sure you have all the supplies you're going to need on hand. If your patient is going to be wearing a liner, you need to have the correct size and thickness um, available to cast over, as well as a thin casting sock and your actual casting material. We recommend the Oser Tech Farm 4 inch for our trans tibial casts, but if that is not available to you, just use whatever your office uses. And once you've found the anatomy and gotten a feel for it, go ahead and put the liner and the casting sock on your patient. And once you've done that, you'll be ready to start the casting process. The first thing that you're going to want to do is run your casting material under warm water. You can choose cold water if you prefer having more work time, but you want to make sure that you get the water all the way through to the middle of your casting material. A good easy way to do that is to just squeeze your casting material once under the stream of the water, and that will make sure you push the water all the way through to the middle, and then squeeze it once more outside of the water stream. Now there are some tips and tricks that you want to be thinking about when you're getting ready to start your cast. One of the first ones is actually wrapping into the medial tibial flare. That will help you get the beginnings of that shape and also will move any soft tissue there over on top of the tibial crest which can always use some extra padding. We always wrap proximal to distal because that will help also pull that soft tissue down and create a little bit of elongation and then continue wrapping until you get to the distal end. The amount of tension that you're gonna be putting in your casting material is very low. Too much tension and you can cause roping if the patient has a lot of stiff tissue and not enough, you're not gonna get a very good shape of the limb. So just slight tension is all you need. And then after you've wrapped the distal end, continue to use a uh, wrap until you use up all your casting material. Once you've done that, you want to instruct your patient to fully extend their residual limb and then just start working the material. Um, part of this is making sure that it's all smooth and there's no large abnormalities in the casting material. And the other part is you just wanna start working it so it starts to set off. Now it's time to pay attention to the anatomy we reviewed before we started. Using the heel of your hand, you want to massage into the medial tibial flare, and then use your thumb to start working the interosseous groove. These are the two main areas that you're going to be paying attention to and working as the casting material starts to set up. One of the main reasons we focus on these two areas while we're casting is because this will give us good control over the location of the tibia in the socket and prevent the socket from rotating on our patient. Both of these areas are really great for weight bearing and help relieve any of the pressure that the patient may be getting over their tibial crest or on the anterior distal tib. Now as you're molding these areas, you want to pay attention to what your material is doing. When you notice that it's starting to harden but still has some workability left in it, you need to ask your patient to flex their knee as much as they can so you can set the posterior trim line of your socket. Now, the reason we do this is because those hamstring tendons we mentioned at the beginning of the lesson move when a patient flexes their knee. They kind of drift in and up. So we have the patient fully flex their knee so you can account for that in your cast. That way you're not getting any areas that impinge and make the patient uncomfortable when they're fully flexing their knee inside their socket. 
Once you've got that posterior treble line set, have the patient extend their socket back out and you can start marking other areas in your cast while the material finishes setting up. These areas include the patella tendon and the area proximal to the epicondyles. You want to make sure that you at least know where your patella is that way you can have that as a reference point for when you're marking your trim lines and you want to keep your ml above your condyles relatively narrow we're not looking to really push in um, like if you were trying to achieve suspension there but you do want to make sure that it doesn't start gap being there and getting too wide on your patient then just keep working the material until it's fully set up and you're ready to mark your trim lines. Once the cast is fully set, you can go ahead and mark where that patella tendon or PTB is, where the proximal edge to your condyles are, and where you made that shelf posteriorly. These will be great references for you to have when you fully mark off your trim lines, and then go ahead and drop your anterior and lateral alignment lines after you've had the patient fully extend once again. After that, you can simply slide the cast right off the patient thanks to the casting sock we used and you're done. Thank you for joining us today for this transtibial how-to casting video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.